Welcome to the Friends of Friends podcast. Here are your hosts, Henry Hargitay and Jason Cole. Here. Here is right, Friends of Friends podcast. I'm Henry Hargitay. That is Jason Cole. Uh, listen, man, I don't really want to waste too much time, uh, but quick reminder, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. You can find us. Go like, go subscribe. Be a friend Be a of a friend, friend of a friend. Be a friend of a friend. Uh, Jay, you ready for him? Listen, introduce the one and only. The one and only who I just got to say right off the bat, I'm just thankful that your agent let you let you have a little fun and come talk to us for a little what's up ish i'm a busy guy man first off you know let's start with a you know what it is when you hear that <laughs> let's Listen, go I, I didn't want to say it but we've had some really good guests thus far i was most excited for this one i was looking forward to this one the most and uh, I know you got some thoughts that you've been waiting to get off your chest, so let's get right into it. The numbers about Daniel Jones, when I look at them, I see minimal reason to think that he's the guy you go with, even for a prove-it year. And I get I know they didn't pick up the option, but the numbers that stand out to me, 12 and 25 as a starter, 36 fumbles, 29 interceptions, zero playoff appearances in a time where the NFC East has been historically bad. I can say I've seen enough to know that I don't think Daniel Jones is the guy. I'm, I'm not. I know that's not a hot take, but you have a lot of thoughts on this, Ish. Well, for me, more so, I like to look at divisions, and I like to base them off who has the best quarterbacks, right? So you start off the top of division. I would say Dak Prescott would be number one. Two, you could argue Jalen Hurts or Carson Wentz. I will put Jalen Hurts number two. Wentz will be three. Sadly, my Giants, Daniel Jones, is the fourth best quarterback in that division, which means probably not going to get a lot of wins. Do you think the prove it year is even worth it? I mean, yeah, because you just got to see what he has. You got to remember, too, you know, that team dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career. Him him, him as well. You know, he had a lot of injuries, you know, with his neck. You know, I think it was one game at a concussion. So it's tough. You know, you have a terrible O-line and, Players are coming in and out. It's, it's tough to, you know, to get things rolling. So I just hope this year for him, you know, he shows growth and he could be that guy. Because if not, you know, we're back at the drawing board and who knows how long that'll take. <laughs> what do you need to see from him personally? Less mistakes. Less mistakes. And just, you know, just try to get better, man. You just got to try to get better. And I mean, again, that's not saying and, and more so win because you can lose, but it's also how you lose. You know, if you lose terribly. It's like, man, we got we got a lot to figure out over here, you know, because you can have the right pieces. But, you know, if you're just not looking good, it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be bad, man. Yeah, um, I just think he's a guy that gets probably more excuses made for him than other people. And I think part of that is based off where he was drafted. But li listen to this quote from Dable, the new head coach. He said these. First three and a half weeks, I've been around him since the off-season program began. I've been impressed with his work ethic, his leadership when he's with the guys. He does a good job in the huddle. I want him to be himself too. I want him to not be afraid of consequences and pull the trigger and attack and have a positive mindset as he continues to grow and learn. Year four now, how much continue to learn and grow can we hear, especially when these are the exact same things that were being said about Daniel Jones when they drafted him? And we're still saying them today. You, the one common theme between all of those things, the leadership, good in the huddle, they're all intentionally things that you can't actually measure. They say that he says that for a reason, because what else is there for Daniel Jones besides the intangibles? You know, it's like we always talk about the intangibles, the leadership, the work ethic, guys love being with him. But at what point? Do you have to actually have the tangibles also? Can he throw? Can he not fumble? Can he read a defense? That's my issue with all this. And I understand the prove it year is worth it financially. You may as well just give him this year because you're not picking up the option. But I don't know, man. I, I could argue you've seen enough and you know you're moving on. Three years is kind of fast, Henry. Come on, man. Pulling the plug after three years. Every year he's gotten better. Let's. Let's he has gotten better here. 
Okay, Ish, so why you tanking them? Ish. Well, I mean, and also to in football, like I feel like football is the only sport where for one year everything can change because it's so many players, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, it's 56 guys in a roster. So you just need that one dude, he'll change your whole season around your whole career around. Look at um Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. When he came out, there was a lot of questions about him. Yeah. And you put right. him in the right system, right coaches, the right players around him. And look, they're the odds on favorites to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. It, you could argue it was a similar thing. Uh, this is a perfect segue into the next topic. But for Tannehill, a guy who Miami was, you know, marginal at best, but gets put into the right system, Tennessee. And it's a different ball game. However, he's been in the headlines kind of for all the wrong reasons lately depending on how you look at it. <laughs> I know I know, Mr. Hooks got some crazy thoughts on this, but your thoughts-ish on what Tanny Hill said about Malik Willis. Oh, for me, it's, it's more so like, remember, at the end of the day, it's a team sport, so you want to win, correct? So if you're the, the veteran quarterback there, you know, you just got to do your job. If you do your job, right, the next guy that's coming up, he's going to learn well. Let's say, for example, you know, he gets injured. Or he's not vaccinated. He gets COVID. He has to miss two games. And those two games are crucial. You want him to be able to come in, play well, and get a win. Because that's really what it what it was all about, is getting a win for your team. Because, again, if you're that guy, you know, you're going to take your team to where they need to be at. So, for me, for him to say, you know, it's not my job to mentor him, not to mentor him, it's like, come on, man. Like, that's, that's a part of a team, you know? To it's, just come in, do your job, and for him to learn from you. Because that's really what it is. He's a third-round pick. It's not like they traded yeah. up in the first round to get him. He, <laughs> right. he fell to them in the third round. So at that rate, you know, the talent is there, but they're not, they don't think he's ready yet, you know? So for yeah. that, just do your job. Play well. Because if you don't play well, guess what? If he's playing well in practice, he's going to get the first-team reps. And at that yeah, rate, got no one to play but every story, man. Can I defend Tannehill's side for a second? Because we always say the NFL is what? Cutthroat. Yes. We say the NFL is a business, right? We sure. always say the NFL is a business. Cutthroat so why business. should Tannehill, after how last season ended, where as good as they were, that job is not, you know, it's a lock for the beginning of the season. But going sure. forward, like the Titans certainly have a QB question to answer, to be answered, I think. So why should Tannehill – feel so comfortable mentoring this guy when no, like that's a guy who's coming for your money. That's a guy for who's sure. coming for your job. So I, in, in that regard, I defend Tannehill. I say, yeah, like I would say the same shit. Maybe that makes me a bad teammate, but like, it does but, make you a bad teammate. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I do get it though too, because right. I mean, if you're making millions of dollars a year, you don't want the next guy to come take your job. And now you're looking for work, bouncing from team to team because he did get shafted in Miami. So I definitely get that aspect of it. But again, if you do your job the right way, you will have nothing to worry about. Okay. Two, so well, two-part question. Ish, as a player, Ish, we'll go to you first. So as a player, if you were Malik Willis, what are you saying to Tannehill in the locker room? I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. All I'm doing is keep my head down and work hard. That's all you can do because you're a rookie. So yeah. at the end of the day, just work hard and let the work speak for itself. I, if I were Malik Willis, I would say, bro, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your job. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're going to talk that type of shit. I'm 100 percent. I'm going to be mentoring you by the end of this. Year, <laughs> right. Right. And you'll hold my bags, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what would you say as a as a coach if you saw a starter treating a backup like that? We're saying just saying that about a backup. I'm not going to mentor them. Listen. It's tricky because for sure that just creates a lot of in the locker room, you know, just uh, let's go. So what is practice looking like? I don't know. That might turn you up. That might change the whole trajectory of the team. Yeah. You know, having pressure. Bus pipes. We'll right. see. Tannehill been in the league for 10 years. He don't want to give up his spot right now. So Fuck that next guy coming up. That's okay. what I'm saying. But but if you're trying to win, right, and you all about the team and you want to make that next leap, 
then you make sure that the backup is just as good as you and learning from you, not just as good as you, but just learning all the tricks of the trade because guess what? He's a rookie and there's a lot of stuff to learn coming in. And he can do that for him. Being that he's been with Miami for however long, seven seasons, and now he's been with the Titans for three or four years. So at that rate, now he can show him what's going on because he's a 10-year season vet. But maybe he sees that he got six, seven more years inside like Tom Brady. I don't know. So at that rate, <laughs> pump your brakes. Relax. Yeah. Tell him. Yeah. So the other thing, there is somewhat of a precedent here where – Sometimes great quarterbacks and Tannehill is not a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback, but great quarterbacks aren't always the best mentors for, you know, incoming guys. I mean, Brett Favre never mentored Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers like refuses to have any, t- any type of relationship. And how long Jordan has Love. Aaron Rodgers been in the league because of doing the what whatever he done? Exactly. And Tom Brady basically got Jimmy G traded. He got his back <laughs> No, no, right. He did. He said, he yo, did. we got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the road, Jim. He went right up to Mr. Kraft's office and back. said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, though, too. Like, you know, you just gave those all those examples. How about in Kansas City with Alex Smith when Patrick Mahomes was drafted? It was that so was like perfect, different. That was a perfect. Yeah, but but look. They it worked. They got to the playoffs with Alex Smith. Wait, but look. They got to the playoffs though with Alex Smith. It yeah. wasn't like there was a bump squad. Right. But what happens is that Patrick Mahomes was just a way better quarterback, a way better athlete. So he took them right. to levels that Kansas City couldn't do with Alex Smith. And you're so what telling did he do? I know this next guy is coming, but yeah. I'm going to do the best I can until my time is up. Isn't that what Doug Philby did for range. Tom Brady? Or who is Drew it? Bledsoe. Drew, Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Yeah. Yeah. Bledsoe. Like, I mean, certain people can carry that weight. Others can't. It's well, not for everybody. That was different, though, because of, I think he got injured, if I'm not mistaken. Bledsoe got injured. He so did. then Tom Brady came in, and that was it. Still, that's and more of a reason not to mentor a guy. I'm hurt. Figure it out on your own. If I was Bledsoe, right. I would have been giving him all the wrong advice, <laughs> telling him all the wrong reads, everything. Brady would still be the GOAT. He'd still have <laughs> – all, all the rings on his fingers anyway. Seven championships later. Jesus, it, it don't ish, even matter. Ish, do you hate Tom Brady as a Giants fan? I did, but what changed the narrative was the Super Bowl against Atlanta. Because let me tell you something. I, yeah. I had the utmost respect for him after that. To be down, That's I think what the did score it? was 24 to 3. Yeah, because, I mean, at that rate, I mean, hello, we beat him twice. You know, it's Boston. You know, you know it's the whole Yankee-Boston thing, you know, so. With the Giants, they're the New England Patriots, but that Atlanta Super Bowl, bro, to see what he did, that was all time levels of adversity, all time <laughs> level of pressure, you know, to score touchdowns and to get two point conversions on top of that. Yeah. Knowing everything. that you don't score this, it's over. Right. Like, like I've never seen a game that had to go that perfect to get into overtime to try to yeah. win. That's a different yeah. level of pressure right there. But- and, and he did it. It's, it's just interesting that that's the Super Bowl that did it. Listen, I know I'm the youngest one on this call right now, but I'm about to educate my sons real quick. Brady did win two Super Bowls within his first four years. At that point, it, Patrick Mahomes hasn't yeah. even done that. You know? Very true. Very true. You know but what the I mean? game was also different, though, too. But we all say At Patrick time, Mahomes is the guy. There's no doubt that he's the guy. But yeah, when Brady won two of his first out of his first four years, you didn't think so? Yeah, I would. I would y'all I must would, have I, forgot, I mean, is what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all must I no, because forget, I mean, but... I mean, I, I mean, but you also have to stand though, too, you know, the tuck rule, which sure. yeah, just yeah. came out and said, you know, that might have been a fumble. Remember, that, if I'm not mistaken, that was their first championship, wasn't it? So, if that's called a fumble, yeah. history might be ran differently. But that was a fumble. That was There's a fumble. so many of those in sports, though. You can you know, say what ifs about everything. There's what ifs about everything. That'll be another segment for another anymore. time. The biggest what ifs in sports history. That'll be a segment for another day. Oh, yeah. That'll we'll bring it. We'll bring Ish back for that one. Ish, speaking of which, as we wrap up here, when when, when can we get you again? Is your agent gonna let you loose? Uh yeah, we'll we'll see. You know, we've got to work out a few kinks. I know some details, but definitely though, I'm looking forward to coming back. Very, very I have soon. one thing for you, Ish. So what did your agent say about the number five pick to the Giants, you guys? Are you guys good? 
I mean, at that rate, I mean, I mean, they couldn't miss. I mean, okay. you know, those two picks. I mean, we, if you didn't pick those two guys, now you got to look at management. Like, what are y'all doing? Okay. All right, just so making sure the Giants are straight. straight. I might, I might have to be a Buffalo Bill fan after that because, like, bro, what are we doing here, bro? Another thing, will be, will we all be on the zero yard line this season at the Giants game? Shout out to, to it. you know who. If you got the tickets, yeah, Doctor Da, huh? If I no, got we- the tickets right now, nah, we gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for checking out the Friends of Friends podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. 